Hi, this is Petey from Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com, and today we're going to run through the installation process of installing SmartBox Server Pro on a remote server. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up a browser and point it to smartboxserver.com, or go to the home page, uh, select SmartBox Server from the products menu. Now they have three different versions here. We're grabbing the Pro, but you might want to scroll down to the Features table and just take a look at some of the benefits of each package. But we're going to use Pro anyway. Again, something you should read later on, but to keep the video short, we're just going to go to the Download section, download the version we need. We're going to be using the 64-bit version of Linux. So we'll download that. We'll also grab the server patch right here. While you're here, take a look at the different licensing prices. If you notice that you get 20 maximum connections for free, this is great for testing. Uh, when you have a small group of people to come on and test your server. Later on when you go live, you are going to want to upgrade to at least 100. That's going to cost you 500 euros. But if your application becomes a little more popular than the 100 maximum connections, you can upgrade to the 500 euros, and you'll only have to pay the difference. The same thing when you upgrade to the element unlimited version. You only have to pay the difference of whatever license you have before that. So keep that in mind. You don't have to go out and get the unlimited version right away. Okay, once you have that downloaded, open up your favorite FTP program. I'm going to be using Coda. Take it and just drop it in. If you notice, I've already done that. Just to keep the video short, upload it to your server. Once you're here, you'll want to go to that directory. So for me, that's cd home slash PD slash smart fox server underscore pro underscore one point six point six and in there you'll have an install install script. Okay, we'll run the install script. We'll need admin privileges. So that's my password. I apparently typed it wrong. Okay, it's going to ask us where we'd like to install it. I've always just used the, the default spot never had a problem with it so for me that's going to be slash home slash pd it runs through uh, take a note that the files were copied the applica application was configured and permissions are set you want to make sure you have all three of these and make sure that it was successfully installed now if we back up one directory and look we're going to have a new directory here this is your install you can actually go ahead and delete this now. I'm just going to leave it there. But you shouldn't need the other one anymore. So, let's apply the patch before we start. Open up your install. Also open up the patch. There's installation notes. It just basically tells you where to install everything. I'm just going to quickly run that down now so that for the server files, it tells you to put them uh, where you have it installed under the server lib directory. So we'll go to the server lib directory, replace these two files. I'm not sure if I have write permission on this account, but we'll try it. I do not. I'll be right back after I get these write permissions. All right. Now that I have the proper write permissions, we should be able to copy these files Let's take them, drop them in, apply to all, we're going to replace, done. Back it up, we're going to go into the Flash API, Ashton Script 2.0, and in the patches, open up your AS2 folder, and just drag that in. Same thing, just replace what's already in there. Back it up, oh, one too many. We'll go to the Action Script 3.0 your AC3 file, copy both these folders in and replace them. 
All right, that's uploaded. We'll just quickly close these down. So we're in root, so we'll go to that folder now. So cd slash home slash pd slash smartfox server underscore pro slash 1.6.6. There we go, we're in there. Let's go to the server. Capital S. Okay, we want to test to make sure everything installed properly. So we'll go. Since I'm running Ubuntu, I precede everything with sudo so I get the administration privileges. Uh, dot slash sfs console. Now what this does is it runs everything out to the screen, all the processes that it starts up. This way here, if anything goes wrong, you're going to be able to see what went wrong, and it's going to give you a little bit more help to debug it so you can get it up and running properly. All right, here we go. If you scroll up to the top of the console, it's going to show you that everything that started up. Uh, it started the H2 engine. We're probably going to disable that and use a different uh, database, probably MySQL. I'm a little more familiar with it. I haven't really looked into H2 and whether or not it clusters. And we'll look into that a little later on. Uh, the amount of processors, how much RAM it's set aside. It's just going to tell you all the stats your network card, the licensing that you have, all your zones or rooms. We're going to be getting rid of all of these, if not, well, at least most of them, probably all of them. So that'll be a different tutorial when we go to configure our server. But if you look through, you'll notice everything installed properly. Now, if you go to the admin folder of your installation, you'll see that you have a uh, a file called admintools.swf. It's a flash file. Copy this up to your desktop. Load it up into a web browser. Uh, put in your IP address. If you're using a local installation, it's just going to be 127.0.0.1. Uh, mine's a remote connection to a computer I have running in the basement, so that's the IP of that computer. Your password and username by default is going to be sfs underscore admin. For the password, it's going to be sfs underscore pass. Now you're going to get a warning to change that. We will change it when we go through the config file, but that will be in, the, in one of the next videos. And while you're here, you can just take a look at some of the stats, everything else that's running, you know, your zones. These are all the different zones. You can go in and take a look. They have rooms in them. And if you had people connected, you'd be able to see what who's connected. Oh, there's lots of good stuff here. You ban your logs, all the different extensions that, that you can run for your games. You can get uh, everything you need here for it. Uh, Blue Box, we're not going to be using Blue Box. Uh, there's your config file. This is great for doing very small changes to your config file, but I prefer to actually use a, a little color syntax. In. A little color highlighting. Uh, so we're just going to log out for now. And there you have it. You should have a server up and running. Now we did start it with console. Let's control Z to kill that. Let's give it focus first. Control C. Uh, okay, so that's closed. Let's make sure it's closed. There's three commands that the SmartFox server wrapper understands. We're in the server folder, so we'll do sudo dot slash smartfox server or sfs status. This will tell you the status of your server. Currently not running. There's also start. There you go. And if you do status again, it tells you it's running. There's restart. This will go in and stop your server, then restart it for you again. 